Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ken Cook, and I'm your positive media host from The Essential News. And today, I'm here at Kessler Stadium at Monmouth University, where the Hawks football team are preparing to soar for the 2019 season. Last year, the Hawks took control of the Big South, having an 8-3 record for a whole season and 4-1 in the conference. With a five-game win streak for the majority of the season, nothing but great things are happening here at Monmouth U. Today, we got a chance to talk with Coach Callahan and some of the players to see what they look to achieve this season and what their plan is to look at some of the big games that they have this season. So let's take a look now and see what they had to say. You know, first, I just want to thank everybody for coming. It's great to have so many people out uh, for this day and to see us practice. And uh, I apologize for the heat you had to stand in out there. got a little humid after a while, but uh, not as humid as it was on the field for these guys. Uh, but I can say that, you know, very happy with the way camp has gone so far. Uh, we're closing in on the final days, uh, and, and break camp here after Wednesday, and then start our preparation uh, for the opener. Uh, but just to kind of give you an overview of things, uh, we knew going into this preseason that we had to we had to replace some key players from our, our teams over the last few years. And on the offensive side, three starters in the offensive line, all three who are fifth year, uh, fifth year seniors, three year starters, all conference players. Uh, so that was a, a pretty big task, and it's something that we started working on back in the winter, throughout the spring, and have conti- conti- continued to work on that uh, throughout the fall. And, and, I, and I really like the direction that's heading there. Uh, we've had a couple guys with some small injuries that have kept them out of some practices, but overall, um, I like the progress that they're making. I like how they're playing as a unit. And we also, you know, obviously we were missing uh, two quality receivers in uh, uh, Reggie White and Vinny Grasso, uh, guys who, uh, you know, accounted for a number of catches for us last year. And But I really have a lot of confidence in the guys that are coming up, filling their shoes, taking their places, guys like Lonnie Moore, Terrence Green, Joe Alderelli, uh Brandon Batts, and among others. Those are just some that come to my head. Uh, those guys have done an outstanding job this camp, and I don't think we're going to see much of a drop-off there in as I told our team, I'm not concerned about what we've lost. What I'm concerned about is what we have and who we have coming back. And, and I'm excited about the, the talent level, uh, the athletic ability, and then the skill level of all these players coming back. And then obviously, you know, having Kenji back for his fifth year, Pete back, Juwan back, uh, Gene Scott back, all, Sean Clark back, uh, that gives us something, uh, a very strong nucleus uh, that we can build around. So I'm very excited about that. You know, and then over on the defensive side, you know, Tymere was the, the probably the veteran of that group uh, for the last two years. Tymere is entering his fifth year right now, and I think what you're going to see is a, is a defensive secondary that's grown a lot. A number of these guys that will be playing this year played last year, and, and some of them, quite honestly, played before they were 100% ready or before, as a coaching staff, we felt they were 100% ready. Uh, but they were the guys that, that played. And, and through that playing, they, they uh, gained an awful lot of experience. Uh, so they're bringing more of a, a veteran uh, approach to the field this year. So it's a, it's a wiser group. It's an experienced group. And they're very happy with what they're doing. And that's the uh, same can be said uh, about the linebackers. Uh, that's a group of guys that uh, played all as young kids last year. They're all pretty much returning right now. And um, really like what they're doing. Where we lost a lot of guys was in, in the front, um, our defensive front. And you know, uh, Eric is, is one of the key guys coming back. Eric, Kari, Scarlett, um, and a number of other guys who I think are having a very, very good training camp so far. So all in all, I guess I'm very happy with the progress that we have made and that we are still making. Uh, we don't break camp until uh, after Wednesday's <laughs> practice, and we've still got two more days uh, that I look at that we can improve and we can continue to get better. Uh, but the one thing about this team that, that really stands out is the the energy and the work ethic that they brought to the field every single day. Uh, you know, we've had what 16, 15 practices now, and, and every single day they've come out there, they've worked hard. Uh, as you witnessed today, we were on the field about two hours, two and a half hours. That was extended by that overtime situation at the end. Uh, but again, they, they played hard throughout, and um, as long as we continue to, to prepare that way, you know, we're, we're going to be excited about, you know, where we go this season. It, it, it's important, and, you know, I, I think as you look at the, the big South schedule, just those games. Um, you know, every one of them is, is a very talented team. And, 
you know, we've got to be able to be to score points. We've got to be able to keep people from scoring lots of points in, in order to be successful. You know, and, and, I, and I'll get right to it, Steve. You, you look at Kennesaw, which is a team that's come down between Monmouth and Kennesaw in, in each of the last two years. And in those years, you know, we haven't been able to score and we haven't been able to keep them from scoring. You know, for a half we did last year, uh, but we weren't able to finish it out. And, and that's something that, you know, on both sides of the ball, we have to be a lot better at, especially in that game. You feel the defense can make that jump this year? Have you seen enough so far? Make a jump to beat Kennesaw, are you asking me? Make a jump to, um, I think, maybe improve the overall numbers, less games, maybe um, with over 40 points or things like that. Absolutely. I feel very confident in that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Coach, um, how about your non-conference schedule? Uh, you don't begin conference play until the middle of October, and it looks like what you have prior to that is pretty challenging. It is, you know, and when you look at our schedule, we open up with Western Michigan from the Mid-American Conference. Uh, they're picked second in their division of that. They won it two years ago. They're a team that's, you know, they were a young team last year coming off a bowl game. Uh, they returned 10 starters on defense. They return eight starters on offense. They, they've really got a, a high power operation. So we, we know we're going to be challenged in that one. Uh, we also have we have Lafayette in week two. Then we have Albany from the CAA in week three, followed by a trip to top 20 team Montana in week four. You know, so we're playing two ranked teams, one at FBS and one at FCS early on in the season. And, and you know, that's going to test us quite a bit. Is that intentional to get you stronger for when the conference play begins? Well, it, it is. I don't know if it's intentional for that uh, exact reason. I mean, but we want to play teams from different regions of the country. Um, you know, last year we thought at eight and three that we should have been a playoff team, uh, especially when they took a couple of six and four teams and a, a six and five team. Um, and a lot of it was pointed to that the, our, the strength of our non-conference schedule wasn't all that good, although I disagree with that. Um, so this was a chance to, to play, you know, quality teams, you know, CAA, Big Sky, uh, Mid-American, um, and that's certainly going to give us a much uh, a much more challenging strength to schedule. Although in saying that, you know, these games were scheduled five years ago. You know, so, you know, they, they were scheduled even before last year, to be honest with you. Um, but it, it's it, it's a great schedule to play. I mean, uh, the experience of playing at Montana, I think, will be a, a great one for this team. A few years back, we went out to Montana State and had a great trip out there. I don't think any of these guys were part of that, right? It was before all these guys were here. So uh, that'll be a, a, a great trip. Uh, you know, and we've played teams from the Mid-American in, what, three of the last four years, I believe it is, with uh, Kent State, Eastern Michigan, Central Michigan. So we know the level of competition that we'll face in those games, Kyle. I think it was a lot of improvement, like just like just here and there, just picking up blitzes and just communicating as a group. I just feel like they've gotten better. I mean, that happens over time. You're always going to have some mess up here and there. But like as a group, I feel there's been great improvement from the spring, like up to camp right now. I do have to I do say we have some experience in the offensive line. But just like you said, I do feel like our line now communicates the best they ever have in the past couple of years. You know, they communicate with Coach Gabe and they tell you, even as a running backs, when it comes to blitz pickup, exactly what they want whenever we have to help out a D lineman or something like that, or just their calls at the line. You know, they're doing a really good job at getting to their backers and doing what they need to do. And if I can follow up, Eric, you go up against those guys. Have you seen a big improvement from the spring to now? Yeah, definitely, because, like, in the beginning, like, I say spring, it wasn't all up to part, but I can say, like, as time went on, they all improved. Collective energy and just don't get better every day. Got a lot better. Coach, returning only two starters, alternating almost 50% right now uh, in, in uh, Tyler Williams and AJ Ferris. So, you know, which one of those guys becomes a guy is still yet to be seen. And then how we mix and match those guards and tackles. But Again, it's a good problem to have because there's a lot of guys that we think have the ability to play, and what that will result in is a, is a greater depth as we move into the season. Has that been the most challenging part? I mean, it seems like from what you said, the pieces are there. It's just a matter of finding out what combination works best. Well, you know, the the, the offensive line is it, it's it's truly a unit that has to function together. There, there's five individual players, that, but they have to function as one on every single play. 
And when the communication works its way down the line, whether it starts from the quarterback changing a play or altering a protection or whatever it might be, that communication has to be seamless as it goes. So first of all, the group that's out there has to be able to communicate flawlessly on every single play or else you're going to have breakdowns. Secondly, the longer you play next to somebody, the more comfortable you become with what they're doing, especially in a zone blocking scheme where there's a lot of combination blocks. And it's just that some of it's nonverbal communication that, that triggers what they're going to do or how they're going to block the combination of a down lineman and a linebacker. And, and then you want to make sure that the guy playing the center is, is getting the point correct all the time, you know, identifying who the, the linebacker is, so to speak. Uh, so all of those things go into it. And some of the guys who are maybe the most physical aren't the best with the communication. Some of the guys who are the best with the communication may not be the most physical or the best, uh, the most talented athletically. So that's where the kind of the combinations occur. And we've moved some guys around a little bit just to try to – some of it's been because we've had some guys out of practice, but some of it has also been just to see which combination, you know, works the best together. Tamir, as the uh, leader of uh, the defense, or one of the leaders of the defense, are you sensing the feeling of urgency for the uh, defensive unit as a whole to improve – if you're going to uh, take that Big South title, and uh, where have you seen the, uh, the most improvement on the defense? Um, I just believe that overall, I think we're all anxious to, to, to compete for another championship and actually win one. Um, but as a leader, um, it's pretty seamless because when I was a young guy, I had some some pretty great leaders in front of me, guys like Mike Basile, Teddy Martinez when I was coming up. So it just makes it a lot easier to be a leader. And as far as the most improvement, I just think that we're all more proactive and learning our uh, playbook and just being where we need to be. So I just feel like as, as a secondary, I feel like just knowing where we need to be um, and just being proactive in that. So I think that's where we improve the most. I'm excited to come out here and compete for, for a championship. Um, for the players, all of you, um, any particular team that you're really anxious to be getting up against, uh, aside from Kennesaw, which obviously is a big, uh, big team? Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I think overall the last two years, I think we're all looking forward to playing Kennesaw again, like you mentioned. But uh, I'm excited for the non-conference schedule. You guys mentioned how tough it is and that the teams will be playing. I'm excited to get out there and play against the, the best competition that we can. So that's what I'm most excited for right now. I'm personally excited to go out to Montana. I've never been to Montana before. So. <laughs> <laughs> Football takes you places. <laughs> Kenji is in preseason situation. So just being more consistent and efficient, I think, will help us as a whole. You know you have in the backfield, obviously, uh, in the way. Uh, when Coach Cal talked about the receivers that are coming back. Guys have been on the field, but certainly replacing some very important players and <clears throat> Reggie and Vinny among them. You know, what have you seen from those guys out there and uh, you know, the way that entire unit is kind of coming along? Uh, obviously, like you said, like we, we lost Reg and Vinny and Jake Powell, like those guys that were really good players. But like Coach said before, we had guys that also played a lot. So, I mean, just them, for example, they, they just have to step up to the plate. You know what I'm saying? Like we got guys that can make plays and it's just a matter of who's going to step up and want to take that next step. But we have guys and playmakers on both sides of the ball. And obviously our backfield with Juan, Pete, Devell, we have players all around. Coach, uh, Grasso handled most of your special teams returns last season. Now, today we saw Tamir out there taking a couple of kick returns. Can we expect to see him handling the duties? Yeah, we've got, um, you know, the guys that have been working at it uh, through preseason of, uh, with the kick returns and punt returns have been uh, Tamir, Terrence Green, um, uh, Eddie Morales. Uh, those are probably the Lonnie. Lonnie Moore has been doing some as well. Uh, those have probably been the four main guys that have been uh, handling those roles uh up to this point, and those will be the guys that will handle it during the season, probably. Did, did you Coach, return did you? kicks last year, Tiny? Uh, I was in rotation, but I was towards the back end. But yeah, I mean, during practice and things like that, if they needed me, I would. I mean, punch safe and things like that. I was, I was out there catching some balls. So, so. so now you have an expanded role in that this year. Yeah, so far throughout camp, I've been a little more involved, and I mean, I'm pretty much doing the same things I was doing back then, but um, I'm just a little more involved now because, uh, like you said, Benny graduated and things like that. So. Excited about that? Maybe yes. Very excited. <laughs> Coach, is there a guy, uh, a freshman that you're going to hear from is DeAndre Clifton, uh, 27. Uh, he enrolled in January. He did some very good things in spring practice. He 
Um, he's doing some very good things now. Uh, he plays the same position that Eric plays, um, and he's he, he's going to be quite a player. Um, yeah, he doesn't have everything down yet, like all the freshmen. Uh, but when when he knows what he's doing, he, he's he's something to be reckoned with. That that's uh, one that comes to mind right now. Um, trying to think of some of the other guys. I, um, I think, you know, you're going to see a little, hear a little bit more from maybe Kurt Almer this year in the defensive line. Was in a rotation last year, but had some seniors in front of him. Um, I, I think he's a guy that, that could step up and do some things there. Um, tight ends are all back pretty much. Running backs, quarterbacks, receivers we talked about. Um, and then the guys in the offensive line. I mean, you know, that, that group that we're talking about is going to have some first-year players in it. You know, John Galena's played before, and uh, Mo Shabana's played before, but, but Manny Christian hasn't been on the field a lot, but he's, we think he's going to be a very good player. Um, over at the right tackle, Justin Zuba is doing some really good things in that position and has really developed as an offensive lineman, you know, over the course of the last year. Um, you know, he came from a, a high school offense locally that – um, if they threw one pass a game, that was probably a lot. And, 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 you know, they were a triple option team. And, you know, so the whole idea of pass protection was completely new to him. Um, and, and he's worked very hard at it. He's dropped some weight. He's strengthened his core. Um, and he's doing a much better job. Good team camaraderie and a positive outlook on and off the field is really the structure and the formula that Monmouth University is using this season with a strong impact on offense with a good solid defense to really lock in a couple of wins this season and take it all the way to the top. So if you'd like to see more information like just like this and more information on the Monmouth football team, go on to theessentialnews.net, our Facebook, The Essential News, and our Twitter, The Essential News NJ, for more positive news. And as always, have a positive day.